Knox Game Design July 2021 Adding sound effects to your game Welcome everyone to Knox Game Design for July 2021. My name is Levi Smith. So this month is going to be kind of a continuation of last month. Last month I talked about how to actually create a sound effect using the BFXR tool. This month I'm going to actually talk about how to take that sound effect and then import it into your game. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go through a few different game engines or game frameworks and talk about how to just simply play a sound effect uh, when you press a button. Um, as I just mentioned, look at last month's presentation for actually how to generate a sound effects, how to generate a wave file. Uh, in these examples, I'm always going to be do using a WAV file. Some game engines allow different formats, but all of them use the WAV format. So if you have it in WAV format, then it's guaranteed to work. So the game environments I'm going to look at are Unity, Game Maker, Godot, Unreal Engine, and Pico8. Now, I thought about doing Mono Game and SDL, but it kind of ran out of time. It's getting late in the month, so I just want to go ahead and get this done. Uh, so I'll leave that as an exercise to everyone else. So for Unity, um, it's not too difficult. Basically, all you have to do is pull your uh, sound file into your Unity project, then drag it on top of to a game object, and that comes out as a uh, audio source out asset, and then you can just call play. But I'm going to go over the method I use that I have outlined here. Okay, so I have Unity loaded here, and I'm not going to go through and go step by step through this, but I'm going to show basically the end product. So... The way I usually lay things out is I have like a game manager here. I have it called demo manager, just an empty game object uh, right there. Then I create a game object, another empty game object, just called sound effects. And then I create a script called sound effects that gets pulled onto that. And the sound effects script is basically just going to keep references to all the audio source objects. So... Uh, the sound effect I'm going to work with is a jumping sound, so I call it sound jump. So right now, all this class has is an audio public audio source sound jump. And then if once we drag that onto the sound effects object, then we can assign that sound jump right there. Uh, another way to do this would be to create a dictionary, I guess, of all the sound effects. But then you wouldn't be able to pull them into the inspector, so this is the way that I do it. Then as ch children objects to sound effects, I put the sound effects in under here, sound effects objects. So you just have like sound jump, then go to your audio. So I put all my audio assets in uh, audio sound effects. I usually have a music folder as well. So all you do is drag this jump sound effect onto sound jump right there. Got a reference to it right there. Then also you always got to remember to uncheck play on awake otherwise once you start this then you want to that sound effects going to play so this is just doing a 2d sound effect you can turn on the 3d sound settings if you want to like have it follow an actual object and things like that but typically in my games i just do the 2d sound effects it, it works pretty good um and you have options uh like volume if you need to reduce volume the pitch um pan, blend, and all that. Uh, the only one I've really ever dealt with is pitch, and sometimes volume, uh, but programmatically, sometimes I change the pitch. Uh, I know one instance, I've created a Tetris game uh, called Dropping Blocks, or one of my Tetris games. <laughs> I've done quite a few of them. Uh, but as the blocks get higher, then the, the sound starts playing faster at a higher pitch. So you can actually take uh, a variable from the game, then apply that. Uh, to the sound effect. I think I did that in the uh, Blocks and Nibiru too. That, that's probably the one that I'm thinking of because it was a Tetris game, but you actually shot the Tetris block. So the higher the blocks get got, then the higher the pitch the music was. So basically, uh, I just have references to all the sound effects under sound effect. Then in my demo manager, I have one. So the reason I have a sound effect object is so I can pass this one sound effect object to any other object that needs to play a sound effect. So I got my demo manager 
it has a public sound effect, sound effect. So then I just drag in this sound effect over here. Then I have a reference to that. Then in my update, I check if the button is down. So that's going to say if the jump button is pressed down on that frame, then we're going to take the sound effects. Then we're going to get that reference to that audio source and then just call play. So having all your sound effects as references, references in one sound effect object in one script makes accessing these things a lot easier. So that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and press play. And so I'm just pressing space. Um, I will also note that a reference input get button down. You could also like do get key press space, but um, the, the buttons are defined in project settings and then input manager. And then you got jump. It's already defined for every default project. That's where we have it defined a space right there. So if we need to change the button, then we just change it right there. And you can go into the Unity documentation and find all the the, the constants that you can put in there for the different buttons, different keys. Okay, so that's Unity. That's basically what I outline on this slide right here. Under assets, create a script sound effect folder, drag the WAV file in there, create a new empty sound effects object. You know, so I basically already talked about all that. And here's just basically what I went through um, showing how all this is laid out. So I'll be putting these as a PDF on the website uh, for later reference. So the next one is Game Maker. Yes, yeah, so I will be putting all this code on my GitHub, and I'll put a link to that on the Knox Game Design Org um, website. So if you want to look at the code for any of these examples, I'll have that out there. So in Game Maker, it's pretty simple. You just right click under sounds, create a new sound, name it to whatever you want to call it. Here I'm calling it Sound Jump. Uh, you want to click the three dot button and assign to wave. Then you want to create a new object called Demo Manager. Um, then open up your default room called Room 1 and drag an instance of Demo Manager onto the grid. Alternatively, I think you can uh, put the code actually on the room itself, but here I'm using a, a manager object. Um, demo manager and event under events, then you put key press space. I think there might be a way to do a generic key button press. I'm not sure. Uh, then you play the sound with audio play sound. You pass it the sound and then the priority, which 10 is the highest and false. I believe that means not to loop. So, so you can see here, uh, under sound, you just right click, create new sound like that and you click the three dots and pick your wave file open and you got it right there then you can call it sound jump which is actually what i have right here go ahead and delete that sound too then under objects you do kind of do the same thing create and you just want to create an object you call it demo manager or whatever your game manager is. Delete that. Okay. So we got our demo manager here. And then if you go into rooms, and open up your room one, what we have right here, you can see where I dragged in the demo manager right there. So all you do is grab it from under objects and drag it in right there. If you don't drag it into the room, then it won't register any events. So then under events, you just click that and add an event. And then you got a key pressed event and do space right there. So that'll pop it into there. Then all I'm going to do is do an audio play sound. And then I'm going to pass in the name of my sound effect, sound jump, 10 and false. Let's go ahead and play this. <laughs> So I wish you could see my hands, but I'm pressing oh, pressing the space. 
space button right there. So yeah, you can do a lot more with this, but this is just just examples of how to just play sound effect, sound effect on a key press. So yeah, this is what I just talked about: clicking sound, creating the sound effect, demo manager, space. It's pretty simple. So Godot is a little bit more involved. Let me go ahead and start up Godot. Yeah, so here's our Godot project right here. Just an empty scene. Now let's go back to the slide. So it's kind of like Unity. You just drag your WAV file from your Explorer. I'm using Windows. I'm, I'm guessing under Linux and everything else, it works the same way. They just drag it into the resource area. The resource area is down here. So you just take your sound effect file. Yeah, you just take it here and you drag it down there. Then it will populate right here as a, the name of the file. I think you can double click that and you can get some different options such as format, 16 bit or 18 bit, or IMA, ADP, CM. I'm not sure what that is. Loop mode, loop begin, loop in, mix, mix rate, stereo on or off. Some other options in under there. Um, so you create a new spatial node called demo manager. So you can just, uh, yeah, so here's my spatial node right here, spatial.tscn, demo manager right there. So what we want to do is you go in, you uh, attach a script to that and double click that. So it kind of looks like Python, no open curly braces, everything's tabs are significant. So what's important here is we have a function, start out with F-U-N-C, and the name of your function is underscore input, all lowercase, and you pass in this EV parameter. So what you want to do is say if EV is an input key event, if it's a key event, and the key, the scan code is key underscore space, which is a constant, a go dot, you do, <laughs> go dot, define constant, then if, so we've got a, a variable up here. It's kind of like an instance variable called key down, like a little Boolean. Tells you if the key is down or not. So if the key is not down, then we want to set key down to true. Then we're going to do get node. So this goes into the, the tree here, and it's going to find the name of your sound, which is sound jump, and it's going to play it. Um, but if... If the key is not, so this is going to fire, it's going to give you a key event whenever you press or release a button, a key. So if, if it's not pressed, it means you're releasing the key. So then we're going to say key down is false. So what would happen if we didn't have this, if, if we didn't track the key down? Well, if, if the input key event and key and scan code is key space, then it's going to play. And I did this first time I did this. This is what happened when you press the key, it's going to play the sound effect. Then, when you release the key, it's going to play the sound effect, which isn't what we want, which is why I track whether the key is down or not. So, we're going we only want to play it when the key is down, not when the key is up. So, let's go ahead and play this. So, let me pick up the keyboard. A little bit of delay. Looks like there's a little bit of delay in the recording, but whenever I play this, it's instant. So yeah, for the sound jump, we just add that child node and add an audio stream player. I think I have that on the slide right here. Yeah, critic child node type audio stream player. So we go to demo manager, create a child node, audio, and you just type by AUD, then you get an audio stream player. I'm just using the audio stream player 2D. I think it's kind of like Unity. If you want to do a, a 3D, you'll use the audio stream player 3D. But by default, I just use the 2D sound effect. Now, if you're having a sound effect that travels or is tied to a certain object, then you might want to use that 3D. 
that's important to your game because you don't want so, a, an explosion far off in the distance sounding like it's right up next to you. So that's when you would use a a, a 3D sound effect. But if you're doing like just like a puzzle game or something, the 2D is fine. I think the only other thing to mention is how to, you know, I talked about how to actually get a reference. You use Get Node to get the reference to the sound jump. When I was doing this, I was trying to figure out a way, kind of like in Unity, to assign that property to create like an instance variable with a reference to sound jump. I couldn't figure out how to do that, so I just used Git Node. May not be the most efficient, but uh, it, it works. Um, there's some options in here for the sound effect. Um, similar, yeah, it's kind of like Unity. You can have autoplay on. If you have that on, then that's going to play the sound effect when it starts and change the pitch. If that changes, that will be way too high. Yeah. yeah, so you can change that pitch right there to change the pitch of the sound effect. Also, change the volume. I'm not even. So it's got a lot of different options in there. So yeah, here's the same thing right here. The code, play sound effect, and what the file system looks like. Pretty simple. So Unreal Engine. Uh, I spent a little while trying. And the Unreal Engine takes a little while to start up. Thankfully, it doesn't go through the middleware anymore. So you can just Double click Unreal Engine and it just pops pops up at the project. But yeah, Unreal Engine is kind of like all the other ones. So I spent an hour or two trying to figure out how to play a sound effect using C++ and Unreal Engine, and I could not figure out how to do it. I think I made some progress, but I was like, I spent too much time on it. So I was like, I'm using Blueprints. Blueprints is the graphical code editing interface in Unreal Engine. I'm, by the way, I'm using Unreal Engine 4. I haven't moved on to Unreal Engine 5 yet, uh, but it is out now if you want to give Unreal Engine 5 a try. But I was like, yeah, I'm just doing blueprints. Now it's not done in 10 minutes. 10 minutes or less. <coughs> but still, pretty slow. There. <laughs> we just now got to Unreal Editor. Yeah, so Unreal Engine is kind of the same thing. You go from the file system and you drag in the WAV file to the content browser. You want to right click and create a new blueprint for your game manager. I'm just calling it Demo Manager. Um, you got to drag that Demo Manager into the content browser. Then you want to select the Demo Manager. Are you on? drag the demo manager from the content browser into the scene. Then you select the demo manager in the world outlier, kind of like the inspector in Unity. Um, very important, you want to set auto. That should be audio. Or no, maybe it is auto. Auto receive input. Yeah, auto, yeah. Auto receive input to player zero. Otherwise, it won't register the key events. You go into the blueprint editor, editor you want to right click and go under input, expand keyboard events, and select spacebar. You can also do like a, gen the recommended way is to do like a generic button event that you can assign. Similar to Unity, you can create like a jump button, then you can assign whatever key or mouse button or gamepad input that you want to. But I'm just doing this for simplicity, just directly accessing the spacebar. Then you right click, expand audio, and select play 2D sound. Then you select the jump sound under the drop down and you replace sound 2D block. Then you connect the space bar pressed with the play 2D sound block. And then, oh yeah, so then when you play it, press the play button in Unreal Engine, then you gotta click the scene viewer in order for it to register the event. Yeah, this looks like, looks like we're up and running. So here's my sound effect demo, open project. Okay, here it is right here. So here's our sound effect right there that I dragged in from the file explorer. 
similar to Unity, just drag it in right there. Then I created this demo manager. So yeah, basically you just go in and select an empty act. Yeah, empty actor and just drag it in. Or wait, no. Yeah, so what you want to do is create a new blueprint class. Select actor. So here's my blueprint. Right there. So this is similar to the demo manager. Then once you have that, then you can go under my blueprint. Then I'll open it up right here. But I think what I want to do where is it? You want to drag it in here. Then you can create edit blueprint, then open blueprint editor. Then you got to click this open full blueprint editor right here. So then that brings up the blueprint editor right there. It gives you some default events right there. I'm going to go ahead and delete my blueprint. Of course, delete and look at the demo manager. So this is what I have right here. Just a simple event. Usually the events are red, have red in the title bar and then the functions are this light blue so yeah, all you do is right click and go down to input then keyboard events then you got scroll down to space space bar like that that's how you get that then delete then you can uh Go down to audio and then don't expand any of these but use the play sound 2d right click so that's how you get that and then you, then you just click this down and then you can select your jump sign right there <clears throat> or whatever you call your sound effect then you just click on the press and then drag it over to your play sound 2d so then you want to pro press compile then play then you want to click in there yeah what well, oh. auto receive input player zero play there we go so yeah Got the keyboard so i don't know why that didn't save out properly when i saved the project but yeah you got to have your Demo manager under your world outlier. Make sure you got auto receive input to player zero or whatever player it is. Otherwise, it won't get the keyboard event. But yeah, we can go into edit blueprint, open blueprint editor, and play. And you should see this light up whenever I press the key. No. Okay, so I gotta drag it over to the side. Click in here. So you can see every time, every time I press the key, you can see that little connection light up, which is pretty cool. But yeah, if anybody out there wants the programming exercise, or if anybody figures out how to do this in C++, I'd be very interested in seeing how that's implemented. Like I said, I did try, but I spent too much time on it. Look, Blueprints is just easier. So yeah, this is kind of like what I just talked about. Here's your sound effect. In the content browser, create the Blueprint class, add the keyboard event, then add the Play Sound 2D. Then click the sound in the drop down. And the other really important part is that auto auto input. Auto receive input, set that to player zero. 
Okay, so finally I'm gonna talk about Pico 8. Pico 8. So I'm gonna load sound effect. Sound effects, yeah, okay. So sound effects, P8. One nice thing you can do in Pico 8, I think you can type in folder. That will open up the location of all your P saved Pico 8 files, P8 files, which you can actually change the location of your save files in the configuration script, but it seems like every time you install Pico 8, you got to go in there and make that change. So sometimes it's easier just to type folder, and then copy this into wherever you want to have your file. But yeah, these are all text files, so sound effects. Mm, edit with Notepad++. So you can see the quote-unquote cartridge right here, Lua code. Pretty simple. We're going to have the same thing that we did with Godot. We're going to have a key down variable, set it to false. Then update, which gets called every frame. We're going to say if button four, which is... So the four arrow keys are buttons zero, one, two, and three. Then I believe the Z key. So you, you can only use Z and X. So the Z key is four, and I believe X is five. So if button four is pressed, and the key isn't down, then we're going to set key down to true. Then we're going to play the sound effect, the first sound effect. If button four is not pressed, then we're going to set key down to false. Then we've got the some default graphics. And here's our sound effect right here. So at the beginning, I said that all of these can use WAV files. Well, Pico 8 doesn't use a WAV file. Pico 8, you can only create sound effects within Pico 8 itself. I hope there's a way to make this bigger. There we go. That's really big. So the sound effects, you, you click on this little backward triangle. So I started out with, you go from 0, 0 to, how many sound effects? 16? You can have a lot of sound effects. 32? I don't know. Maybe 64. I don't know what the maximum sound effect is. But here's the one there that I created. You can play it with space. You can change the speed up here and drag left and right. So the lower the number, the faster it plays. The higher the number, the higher the number there, the slower it plays. So that's kind of like a little jump sound. You can change the waveform right here. Oh, well, that's just the same. That's only if you're creating a new one. Change it. Change the waveform. So this kind of goes along with the BFXR. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, so down at the bottom, it does tell you what these waveforms are. Triangle, tilted saw, saw, square, pulse, organ. Here's noise. So noise really doesn't seem like it makes any difference where you place it. That's no. I don't know what this one does. Pitch and change the pitch. Then you can loop it if you want to. But uh, yeah, right here is all the code. Again, Pico 8 is Lua. Uh, not technically not case sensitive. Everything's basically lowercase. If you try to type in uppercase and you get a bunch of weird special characters, but here's the code that I showed earlier, the update, button four, not key down, then set key down, play sound effect one. Uh, if button four is not down, then key down is false. So what would happen if you didn't keep track of button down? If you just said if button down four, 
play sound effect one, then it would just continually try to play that sound effect. So you'd probably get the very first pitch of it uh, until you let the key go. So run. Uh oh, oh, you got to press. So for this one, since we're using button four, it's the Z key. I tried pressing space. I was like, hey, what's going on? So again, you press escape to switch between the, like the console mode and the editor mode. And then you shut down to exit. Uh, let's not change. Oops. Shut down. Continue with shutdown, yes. So yeah, that's basically what I showed right here. And that's it. Again, I would have liked to have done... Um, it would have been nice to do like Pi Game and Scratch. I didn't do SDL or uh, Mono Game. But it isn't too hard. It's just, I don't know, it's getting near the end of the month. And I just want to go ahead and get this done. Um, may do those. At a, there may be a part two to this at a future date. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. Still haven't decided what I want to talk about next month. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, so we still got the Discord channel going. Uh, Ar Arctic uh, posted some cool screenshots. Right, I wish I could make this bigger. Copy. Open link. A little bit, but you want to do control. So it's kind of like a little street light that he did right here. I really like how he documented like all the different parts of the street light right here. So he's been working on that. Down. So then he started rendering it too. Looks like he's doing a pretty good job. So he's uh he's using Maya, which I commented I've never used Maya. I think it is I forget how much Maya costs, but I know I always just use Blender because it's free. Also wanted to mention uh, William Mayfield, who is in our channel. And he's been joined he's joined a few of our monthly meetings at the past, but yeah, his little game development, I, think, I guess, company is called Frickin' Frack Games. Now, I was looking here, and they are, he's actually in Lexington, Kentucky. So I know there's a lot of game development that goes on up there with uh, Eastern Kentucky University. They used to have that vector convention. So if you're looking for video game talks, check out, just look up Vector Lexington or EKU. But apparently he's in that area, so I don't think he's got... Somewhere he has a list of people. Information. Somewhere I saw where he had the, the people who work on this. Oh, uh, it may be on the YouTube. Go back here. Yeah, so here are some of the people... I don't think they, these may all be Lexington, Kentucky people, uh, but they do have a YouTube channel, Frick, Frick and Frack, all one word, games. So you can see trailers. Their new game is called Rise Up. I think they're just distributing it through their website. Um, so I had never heard of this. So this is an idea for a future talk is distributing. That may be what I do next month is distributing your game. I don't think we ever talked about that. But uh, yeah, he has it right here by now. And they're using this XSOLLA. I've never heard of that, but it looks kind of like a little humble bundle uh, thing where you can buy games, things like that. Because I've used a humble bundle game distribution it looks very similar to this where you actually just sell your game from a web website which i think is really cool but yeah this rise up kind of looks like a little space style game got video here and developers talking about the game so yeah check it out um they got some other games 
on the website. Sugar launch. Tool belt. Alien invasion. Lisey's river. Like a better dog. And the prototype. I guess that's the name of the game is the prototype. You can contact them through here. So yeah, that's all I'm aware of that's going on right now. Um, I'm still working on the. I got some. I, I got some new ideas. There was a GM48 last weekend. I don't think anybody participated in it. I thought about doing it, but yeah, I, I've just been tired lately. I need a break from game development. Uh, but I do have an idea for a game, which I may share later. I already shared it on the Discord. Um, but I want to finish up the Morse Code Rescue game, um, which I worked a little bit on the graphics and uh, gameplay for that. But not enough to where I want to show it off again. Anyway, everyone out there, go out and check out noxgamedesign.org. Yeah, I need to add the frickin' frat games to the directory. So, this is really just for anybody who participated in our group. You don't necessarily have to be in Knoxville. But if you're active, you know, I'll go ahead and add you. Um, got rid of the social media, so just doing the web URLs now. I'm also got rid of the last names as well. Um, so yeah, make sure you check. Got all our podcast places right there. Got all, all of our past episodes. And and once I finish editing this, then I'll post the slides, kind of like I did with the sound effects for last month. So if you're interested in the sound effects, I got the all the slides right here for the talk that I did. Uh, there wasn't any code for last month, but... I will add the code this month and then the video. I wanna, I'm working on getting all the old videos up on Rumble. Rumble.com and then you can go to Knox Game Design. So yeah, I think I'm up to what? Yeah, 2019, March 2019, loading all the videos, old videos up to Rumble. And it's. The nice thing is, is like these are getting almost as many views as they did on YouTube. And these are old videos. But this one has 25 views, 19 views, 18 views. So, yeah. Check out, check out the Knox Game Design Rumble. You can also click on Knox Game Design right there. They can sort by views or most recent things like that. I don't know why. may have to have over 20 views to um, show up in the sort by views and uh, be the ones that have been posted in the last month or the last year. Things like that. Yeah, so I'm really working on moving over to Rumble. I haven't tried uh, embedding a Rumble video yet, so we'll see how that goes, but hopefully in the future I'll have the Rumble video embedded on the website instead of the YouTube. Yeah, so that's going to wrap it up for July 2021. I uh, appreciate everyone watching the videos and listening to the audio. And I'll plan on uh, being back and seeing everyone in a month. Mm -hmm.